One World of Sport and the sponsors of New Zealand Endeavour. Lifespan Smoke Free. ANZ Bank. Clear Communications. BP. Toyota New Zealand. New Zealand Apple and Pear Marketing Board. And Instant Kiwi. Proudly present the Whitbread Report. Hi everyone, things are at a very interesting stage in the fifth leg of the Whitbread. The leader Yamaha is slowing down and the bunch is chasing hard. But Yamaha skipper Ross Field told us today he's still happy to be the pacemaker. They have to come under these ears. Well, I mean, the law of averages say they have to come under these lighter ears. Now, the good thing for Yamaha is the fact that Fort Lauderdale is not too far away. Around about 600 miles in the first boat is due in on Monday. And over the past 24 hours, Yamaha has hit lighter conditions and slowed considerably, allowing the big maxis to peg back the deficit. But as you can see, there is still a decent gap. Now, Swiss entry Merit Cup is still ahead of New Zealand Endeavour, but the Kiwis are edging closer all the time. And tucked in behind Endeavour is Interim Justitia, which slashed Yamaha's lead in the Whitbread 60 class by 50 miles over 24 hours. Galicia Pescanova is also making good progress and the crew on Italian yacht Brooksfield are on a diet. Yes, it's breakfast only every second day as they are running out of food. Winston is seventh on the water, but it has been the fastest of the leading bunch today, averaging a little over 12 knots and that is four knots faster than Yamaha. Now Grant Dalton wasn't grumbling today. He told us that he was happy with Endeavour because she was gaining. It's good to do it to someone else for a change. Welcome across the equation, Brenda. Well done, Brenda. It'll grow back, Brendan. And now, here are the latest placings in the race for the Heineken Trophy. Well, that's about it for today. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you again same time tomorrow as we follow the fleet to Fort Lauderdale. Bye for now. Sunday on Countrywide Bank Grandstand. One o'clock, it's the grand final of the Caltex Cup netball and we'll be live from the ASB Stadium Auckland to catch all the action. Three o'clock, Bluebird Kiwi League. Round seven of the Lion Red Cup. Canterbury Cardinals take on the Hutt Valley Firehawks. And at four, Super 10 Rugby. Waikato plays host to Natal at Rugby Park. It's all go on Countrywide Bank Grandstand. Sunday at one on One World of Sport. See New Zealand and the world next on One with Network News, Sport, Weather and Homes. After Wheel of Fortune, Blue Heelers are caught by the shockwaves that follow a gun attack by two criminals in Mount Thomas. See a new export money spinner in Palmer's Garden Show. Gordon's in for the silent treatment in the British Empire. After primetime news, the South Bank Show profiles Woody Allen from Manhattan to Manhattan Murder Mystery. Tonight on One. Leading the news, should New Zealand send troops to Bosnia? As the Serbs advance further into Gorazda, a Halen poll shows we're evenly split on whether Kiwi soldiers should go. The latest inflation result has analysts hurrying to capitalise. Six up, yes, good number. Very good number. Police remove a vital part of the case after charging a man suspected of swallowing a condom full of heroin. And home alone, a solo mum is charged after four children, all under six, are left by themselves. Good evening. New Zealanders are polarised over the thorny issue of whether Kiwi troops should be sent to Bosnia. A special One Network News Halem poll shows opinion is divided, 45% either way. The government is currently considering a United Nations request for more troops. The UN says the situation in Gorazda is increasingly desperate, with hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the streets. Here's political correspondent Linda Clark. <laughs> After days of standoff, the United Nations relief convoy finally rolled out today towards Garajda. While in the hills around the besieged city, Serb soldiers held their ground.
But the UN convoy made little progress, just 50 kilometres down the road, and a crowd of Serbian women blocked their way. The two-day-old ceasefire is already well and truly breached. There are reports of shells falling at the rate of one a minute. Once again, Garajda's hospital was hit. And today the Bosnian government reported another ultimatum from the Serbs. That they will roll over everything in Garajda, including civilians. Here at home, the government is considering sending more troops to Bosnia. It received a request from the UN back in March and is clearly in no great hurry to make any commitment. And a special One Network News Halen poll shows New Zealanders are evenly split on the issue. 500 people were polled, 45% approved of sending troops, 45% opposed the idea and 10% didn't know. Generally, men are more in favour of sending troops, women less so. Break it down into age groups and interestingly, of those 60 years and older, just 28% want more New Zealand troops in Bosnia, 60% don't. There is no mandate here to send New Zealand troops into a war zone. But neither National nor Labour will rule out the possibility. Jim Anderton totally misunderstands what New Zealand's contribution would be. Nobody is asking New Zealand to declare war on the Serbs. What New Zealand has to weigh in the balance is whether we have an obligation, an overall obligation, to assist the UN to deal with a very difficult situation to save the lives and pre prevent the carnage. But it seems on this day, when we remember yesterday's soldiers, New Zealanders are not too keen to send another generation off to a European war. Linda Clark, One Network News. And tonight, the UN Security Council demanded Serb forces pull back from Gorazda and agree to a ceasefire. The resolutions are expected to set the stage for NATO to use airstrikes in defence of Gorazda and other UN safe havens. And the Security Council has also decided to withdraw most of the UN peacekeeping troops in Rwanda because of the civil war. The Red Cross now estimates the fighting has claimed 100,000 lives in the past two weeks. There was some good economic news today that defied some dire predictions. There was no movement in the consumer price index for the March quarter. That meant the annual inflation rate was lower than expected. And that could take some of the heat off home mortgage rates. Penny Deans has the story. Analysts were waiting anxiously today to release the news that the consumer price index for the March quarter was zero. Yeah, it stacks up. Yeah, it's a good number. Very good number. The main yeah. falls last quarter were petrol prices, airfares and interest rates, offset by rises in housing costs and education fees. The zero result means the annual inflation rate has fallen slightly from 1.4% for the December quarter to 1.3% for the March quarter. I think it's genuinely a very good result. We know the economy is growing very strongly, so we're looking for inflation. Fletcher's in Wellington has just taken on 10 apprentices in the belief that the economy really has come right. Penny Deans, One Network News. Two separate inquiries are underway into the failed Fortex Meat Company. The Serious Fraud Office is investigating how a multi-million dollar loan appeared on the company's balance sheet as income. And the Securities Commission is examining the sale of a large block of shares just before Fortex collapsed. Ainsley Torbett reports. The controversy over the Fortex collapse hasn't ended with the company going into receivership. Receiver Alan Isaac says in the 1992 annual report income appears to have been significantly overstated and liabilities understated. The will take some weeks. Ainsley Talbot, One Network News. The man suspected of swallowing a condom full of heroin is in the Christchurch police cell tonight. He's been charged with possessing heroin for supply. The man's been under guard in a hotel room for three weeks, but police still won't say if he's had a bowel motion. John Selwood reports. Detectives were this afternoon removing a port and air conditioning unit from the hotel where they've been detaining the man under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Orders a short time ago, she's stunned and bitterly disappointed. Her lawyer is considering applying for a new trial. John Stewart, One Network News. 
The policeman photographed by a speed camera at three times the speed limit has been charged. Graham Wright, the son of Assistant Commissioner Phil Wright, was on his way to an accident last November. He's now been charged with driving with excessive speed. The Police Complaints Authority is to investigate why it took police so long to deal with the matter. A solo mother has been charged with neglect after two of her young children were found wandering the streets of Rotorua last night. When police returned the children to their home, they found two more at home alone. As Philip Burton reports, all were under six years old. The four children are now safe in this social welfare home. Last night they were Anzac weekend and perhaps longer until social welfare decide where they should go. Philip Burton, One Network News. And the mother, Jean Cash, entered no plea to the charge of neglect when she appeared in court today. Coming up, John Gillies gets a long jail sentence to match his list of crimes. And where is Pooh? The royal pet goes walkabout. Tonight, the defamation case between two columnists that ferreted out true confessions on the witness stand. A column in Metro magazine is alleged to have defamed a Sunday Star Times columnist, Tony McRae. The battle that goes way back, Holmes tonight at 6.30. Easy. Firestone Direct, where it's always easy to save. Tonight on One. This is where it all began. Maggie meanders through a rural haven. It's a very colourful border right through. Nice it? little border this one, yes. A touch of colour, a sense of fun and continuing plans. I think a pond. What do you think? Bill talks to a specialist cultivator. Well, we feel the New Zealand climate is perfect almost for this crop. And Root looks at the research that goes on behind such ventures. We can get much, much better prices on the overseas market. Palmer's Garden Show, 8.30 tonight after Blue Healers on One. John Gillies, the man who stabbed a Gisborne policeman last year, has been jailed for a total of 12 years. The sentence included convictions for escape, kidnapping and burglary. John Vores was in court. At just 22, Gillies already has a string of violent convictions. Now he could never be too long. Gillies will be eligible for parole in six years. John Vores, One Network News. A health worker has pleaded guilty to manslaughter after the death of a patient in a Wellington hospital. Police told the Wellington District Court the woman administered the wrong dose of painkiller to an elderly patient last month. The woman's name, occupation and place of work were suppressed. She's been remanded on bail for sentencing in the High Court next month. Māori voters can probably look forward to one extra seat in an MMP parliament. That's the outcome of a campaign to increase numbers on the Māori roll. As David Jameson reports, those numbers have increased by nearly 31%. That could mean five Māori seats. For months, Māori have been waiting to find out. Early indications of numbers opting for the Māori roll hadn't been good. Many had made the criticism the two months allowed for the process wasn't long enough. Today, Doug Graham released the official figures. And you will see that there has been an increase of Māori on the Māori roll from 104,000 to 136,000. That's nearly a 30...